Today I'm going to show you how to use Fimo Soft White Clay to make bookmarks, tree decorations and gift tags. First you need to roll out your Fimo clay to about 2 or 3 mils thick. I've got this rolling pin that I use specially for clay and as you can see it's got rings that you can add on the end which are 2 mils thick or a sixteenth of an inch. You've also got a 3 mil ring, a 6 mil ring I think and a 12 mil ring I think it is. But I added the 2mm thick one so that when you roll out your clay and your rolling pin is touching um, the surface on both ends, you know that your clay is 2mm thick all over and it should give you a nice even finish. It doesn't always work exact, so you'll see me rolling it out extra later on, but it does work most of the time. Otherwise, if you've got a fresh pasta maker, use that and you can roll your clay through there. I just don't have one but I've seen this works really well. I have got the big pack of Fimo clay so I'm just cutting it in half because this stuff is really hard to work with. Um, so I'm cutting it in half and then I'm going to wedge it between two pieces of baking paper. You can use wax paper or something similar just so that the uh, clay doesn't stick to it. Then when your clay is between the paper, you can roll out your clay, it's like I say, two or three millimetres thick. Um, you don't want to do it any thicker because that's going to be too thick for a bookmark if you're making bookmarks like me. And I'm going to skip some of this because this took me 30 minutes to roll out this clay, that's how tough it is. But I was working in a cold room, I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, and my arms and my wrists really ache now. I peeled away the top layer of the baking paper just so I could roll out and feel the clay a bit more because I hadn't quite got as thin a layer as I needed to. The baking paper is also really good for keeping your clay clean so it's a really good thing to use. I'm starting off by cutting a straight line down the one side of my clay because I want to split the clay so I can use some for bookmarks and some for decorations and gift tags. Ideally you need a ruler to draw a nice straight line down but I didn't have one nearby so I just found something with a straight line for me to use. I'm just starting on the small section so I can make a couple of gift tags um, but it wasn't quite as thin as I needed them to be so I carried on rolling it out a bit more until my two ends of the rolling pin touched the table and that's how I know when it's two mil thick. I knew that I wanted my gift tags to be in the shape of stars so I got my cookie cutters that I have in a star shape. I've also got things like uh, stockings, bells, angels, lots of Christmassy shapes but they're a decent size, they're not too big if you look at them in comparison to the size of my hands but I can only get two star shapes out of this piece of clay but that's alright because I'm not doing it on all of my gifts, these are just to see how they come out. Peel away all the excess clay and put that to one side and then with these two stars you need to make a little hole in them because you need somewhere to thread the ribbon through. So I'm just using a straw, as you can see I use this one quite a lot because the one end is actually blocked up. <laughs> I'm just placing them on a separate piece of baking paper for now. I'll come back to these later to work on them. Um, I just want to get my shapes cut up first, I think. Now back to that big piece of clay. I'm going to cut down the other side of it's like an em it's like a plastic envelope that I used to draw around or cut around rather. Um, but this will give me a good shape for bookmarks. Just make sure those edges are nice and neat when you cut them. I've got some proper tools from Hobbycraft but you could just use disposable plastic knives if you wanted to. So now that I have two nice parallel lines I can go ahead and do the top and the bottom line. Um, I think I did it about six inches long these bookmarks. I 
I just needed enough clay to do three bookmarks and I did them about two inches wide, maybe about an inch and a half. Put all this extra clay to one side because you can use it after and like I said I want to make some Christmas tree decorations so I'll use it for that. Sometimes it does stick to the paper, um, that's why wax paper is better, but baking paper is fine for this. Well, it, it's okay, um, but you can always get your clay tool and wedge it underneath the clay. It just distorts it a little bit and on the back it makes it a bit, uh, well, not smooth. <laughs> When I cut my three bookmarks out, as I mentioned before, it has been sticking to the baking paper a little bit, so I'm trying to prise them away using the clay tool um, and make sure I don't damage them too much. Again, I added a hole so that you can add some ribbon through at the end. This is optional, you don't have to add ribbon, I just think it adds a little finishing touch. I'm not too worried about my edges not being completely straight now, just as long as they are not too crooked, just try and straighten them up with your hands, um, but these give a nice handmade feel I think, so I'm not too worried, if you are worried you can recut them again. Now it's my favourite bit, so you need a napkin that you want the pattern from, so I wanted a flowery bookmark and then I've got some Christmassy napkins that you can see in the corner of my screen, um, these are for my decorations later for my Christmas presents um, and for my Christmas tree, but what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting the perforated edges away as the holes will uh, show up on your clay, so it's best to get rid of those so you don't have that problem in the first place. Then decide which part of the napkin you want on your clay. So I had three flowers on here which worked out really well as I've got three bookmarks. So on each bookmark they're going to be slightly different. Cut out the section that you want to use. You want it to be slightly bigger than your clay. It doesn't have to be the same shape as long as it covers the surface of your clay. Then I just lined up with the clay to make sure that it does fit before I go ahead and do the next step. And the next step is to separate your napkin into the three layers. So there's three layers to a napkin and you want the front layer with the picture on it. The other two layers are just plain bits of tissue. When you just have the front layer with the picture on it, you then need to flip this over before you place it onto the clay so that your image is now mirrored. Then just spend some time making sure that your image isn't wrinkled and that it's in the right position that you want it to be because this is where it's going to be baked on basically. And then you're going to get some baking paper again, just a scrap piece, and you're going to rub it all over the image very gently, just apply a little bit of pressure and then that way your um, paper napkin will basically imprint and stick onto your clay when it's been baked. I will point out it is important to use paper napkins, this doesn't work with anything else, no fabric napkins. That's my first one finished, it's as simple as that. And if you notice I have covered up the whole of the ribbon, it doesn't matter because we can get rid of that once it's been baked. So no need to cut around fiddly holes and if you look I haven't cut it precisely to size and it's not exactly straight but that does not matter as you won't see that in the finished product. So I'm just going to repeat this on the next two bookmarks. I got stuck to the baking paper again so I had to get my clay tool just to get behind them 
and ease them away from the paper again just so we can flip them over and place them onto our piece of baking paper that's going to go into the oven on this one I had two random pieces of blue napkin uh, clearly from the sky part of my napkin but I have no idea how I got two small pieces on there I tried to get them off but I decided to leave them because otherwise they would have been damaged too much and I'd have to re-roll that bookmark again if you notice as I put these bookmarks onto the piece of baking paper that's going to go into the oven I'm putting them upside down that's not because it's the right way to put them in the oven it's just because I'm going to repeat the process again on the other side so we have a double sided bookmark it's up to you if you want a white side and a pictured side or if you want to do the same as me and do pictures on both sides just space them so that they're not overlapping but on here you can see clearly where I have that extra excess napkin and it doesn't matter because we're going to get rid of that at the end repeat the process again of what we just did with separating the napkins cutting that section out and rubbing it on with baking paper onto the bookmarks if you are doing them double-sided like me now that's my bookmarks done i'm going to start working on my gift tags so i'm going to do the same process of cutting a section out of the napkin that I want to use so I want to use some of the foliage to go on my stars I just got rid of these perforated edges again I don't know why I didn't do this the same way before where I folded the napkin into the fall and then you can get rid of that perforated edge much quicker I'm just getting the section that I want to use again, separating the napkin into the three pieces of ply. Use the top ply with the um, picture on it and then rub it onto the clay with baking paper, exactly like you did with the bookmarks. But this time I'm just going to do the front layer, I'm not going to bother doing the back side of the bookmarks. Not the bookmarks, the gift tags. I'll just put these to one side on my baking tray for now so this part is ready to go into the oven that will give me more room to work on my Christmas decorations then uh, but on the baking tray make sure that everything isn't touching and just separated just a little bit and spaced out nicely and finally I'm going to create some Christmas decorations again with the clay so we're going to do bell shapes for this one and then I have a different napkin which has some ballet dancers and some snowflakes on it which I think is really elegant and sophisticated and I really love it so I thought I'd look good on the Christmas tree as we're very much red gold and green in our house when it comes to Christmas trees um, so gold it is to go with it it is exactly the same process as the last two things that I've made. Other things that you can make with this process are jewellery, so you can make earrings, pendants, um, you can make coasters for drinks. I'm doing these double sided again. I think they need to be as on the Christmas tree your decorations move and you don't want to just see a plain white side to these decorations.
add these last few decorations to your baking tray so then everything is ready to bake in the oven and then what I like to do is to just go over everything one last final time with the baking paper and just rub the design on get another baking tray ideally the same size but I only had one slightly smaller and place this over the top of your clay pieces this way it stops the clay from burning on top so you want to put this in the oven preheated at 110 degrees you want this to cook for one hour so one hour at 110 degrees celsius and ta-da here's the big reveal okay they look exactly the same as when they went into the oven but that's a good thing they haven't burnt um, and it's going to change in a minute so I've got a bowl of cold water I don't know if it makes a difference if you use hot or cold water so just stick with cold water I would because I know it works I'm getting a tea towel just so I can put everything out to dry after and to protect my worktop and then what we're going to do is we are going to get our pieces of clay and where it's got the excess napkin paper around the edges just rip those bits off it does not matter if it goes um, onto the clay if that makes sense if you rip the paper that's attached to the clay that's good then dunk your clay products into the water so in this case my bookmarks I'm starting with so you can either Dunk them, keep dunking them into the water or you can soak them in the water for about a minute and then bring it out it's up to you I use both methods both methods work well um, but I start off with a dunking method so keep dunking it into the water and then as you get it into the water rub off some of the um, napkin where that is on that surface area so you want to go in like a circular motion and just apply a bit of pressure and you know when water gets wet it's not <laughs> when water gets wet what's wrong with me when um paper gets wet then you get like clumps of paper like little pieces if that makes sense that's what's going to happen with this napkin so you're going to get clumps of napkin come off which is exactly what you want to happen keep getting it wet keep rubbing the napkin off you this takes about five ten minutes to do um, a bookmark of this size obviously you've got the front and the back to do so I'm trying to rub the back as you can see me rubbing the front as well You want to keep going until the surface is as smooth as you can get it to be so it will still be rough if there's loose pieces of napkin on there I really hope this makes sense to you um, when you do it you'll understand exactly what I mean but um, you'll keep getting lumps of napkin until it's finished so then you'll stop getting any lumps at all and it'll be a nice smooth finish and then that's when you can put it to one side dry it with a tea towel just dab it with a tea towel and leave it there to dry repeat this with all of your clay napkin objects I don't know what else to call them at this point um, but your water is going to get dirty you don't need to change it it just means that you're doing the right thing your pieces of napkin are coming off just leave them to dry for about five minutes and then you're ready to add um, any ribbon or string that you want to add to them or if you've done coasters you might want to add some little foam feet to them you can see from where I've laid them out you can see that all my pictures are transferred really nicely onto the clay and they're nice and smooth at this point you could seal it if you wanted to with maybe something like Mod Podge um, I've never tried that so I don't know what that's like but you might be able to get a bit of a shine to it but I quite like the matte finish and also I like the fact that where the clay's not completely straight it looks really handmade and obviously they are handmade at this point I'm just adding some gold ribbon to my bell shapes the ones with the dancers on 
Um, the gold just matched really well with the napkin, so I thought that it would give a nice finishing touch. So I'm just threading that through the top hole and um, giving a bit of excess ribbon so I've got something to hang it with onto the tree. Then for the bookmarks, I'm doing a slightly longer piece of ribbon and a thicker piece of ribbon. I'm doubling that piece of ribbon over and I'm just twisting the end so I can thread it through the hole a bit easier because it's thicker than the other ribbon that I used. And when those two ends are pulled through, you've then got a loop on the opposite side which you can loop over those two pieces. You'll be able to see on the video for reference if that didn't make sense from the voiceover. Tighten that up and then with a pair of scissors just snip off the ends at an angle to stop them from fraying and to make it look neater. Here are my finished products. Um, so with the gift tags I've just threaded some ribbon through ready for them to be attached but I haven't done anything else to it, I haven't tied them or anything. So here's a present that I'm giving to someone and I've used simple brown paper, I love using brown paper because it's recyclable and like most wrapping paper. And then I got this holly garland from a shop called Tiger here in the UK, I don't know if it's a shop that you can get anywhere else in the world but they do great crafty things. So this garland has some holly which I love and it's like wire so it's quite easy to um, wrap around things. Simply I'm just going to add my little star gift tag to the holly garland and just tie it on just to give it that finishing touch. And I just think it looks so simple but effective on making a really nice looking um, present. It's, it's all in the gift wrap I think. When it comes to the bookmarks, I don't like to give them on their own, um, but with a book, I think they make a great gift. It would look great with brown wrapping paper. It would make the bookmark stand out more. And again, the brown paper is recyclable, whereas this one isn't, but I don't use much of pattern paper. So forgive me for using a little bit of it. I just like to place the bookmark on top of the book and tie it in place with either twine or ribbon and that's essentially two presents in one there for that person. And finally I thought I'd show you how the Christmas tree decorations look on the Christmas tree. This isn't the final Christmas tree that they're going to go on but just to show you the effect that they have I think they stand out really well against the green and I'm super happy with everything that's been made today. If you also enjoyed what I made today then please subscribe to my channel. On Mondays I do art lessons to help teachers for children and on Thursday I do more art related stuff and I have another gift idea or two coming up in the next few weeks for Christmas. Bye!